Hey guys, how's it going? Warshack or Rob here, and we've got quite a few new cards to cover since the reveal stream yesterday where they went over like a million new legendaries. I'm just kidding. They went over like, I think like five or six new legendaries. There's a couple leaked cards. So we're going to go over them. There's quite a few cards in this particular bundle, so I'll try to go them semi quickly and not spend too much time on them. Um, but there's some that'll probably take a little bit more time than others. We left off not covering this uh, new priest legendary in the back end of last video because it's come out right after I made the video. Uh, unfortunately, this guy to me doesn't look that great. Uh, a lot of people have high hopes for him. But his best case scenario, which I don't want to get into too much, but it's like a cloning gallery spirit lash kind of play where you put a whole bunch of like Velen and Malagoses and statues into your deck. They cost one mana, you play this, then you get a one mana Malagos and Velen and whatnot. Uh, that's almost never going to happen, like ever. And <laughs> on top of that, uh, if you clone a gallery and you get Malin and Velagos, Malin and Vel, wow, Velen and Malagos, holy crap, Rob, speaky thy English. Um, you probably have won that game anyway, because mind blasts are free and whatnot. So I don't really see this guy as being like super awesome. But I mean, his ability is interesting. But it's not like something you can play. It's not like you play this guy and you get something right away. Like you're getting immense value. This guy is like setting up for some sort of OTK because you were able to make something cost one mana that normally wasn't one mana. And then you can play them all in one turn after you've played this guy. So there might be like some sort of OTK deck that spawns from, you know, have making sure you kill off a minion of Spirit of the Dead and then drawing a one mana version of it. But we'll have to see. Nothing comes to my head as of now. Um, but it does open up combo. Anything that changes stuff to one mana opens up combos. Uh, the next one is a the Shaman uh, Shaman Legendary. Oh my gosh, my brain is not working today, right? Uh, I call him Z Mr. Zen. He's got two toads on his shoulders, which is really cool. If we remember huge toads from way back in the day, the two mana, three, two. Um, I remember that being played a lot in Arena. Anyway. His ability is really good. I, I like. I, I think this card is going to be very, very solid. Uh, three mana, one three. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, it also targets adjacent ones. So very similar to Storm Surge, which came out, which duplicated spells. This guy actually casts it, the adjacent ones. So you can use this on your own abilities. You can use this, or on your own creeps. You can use this on the enemy minion's creep. So let's think about Hex. If we Hex a middle minion, it's going to Hex the two right ones. So you basically get three Hex with this guy. If you think about like Lava Burst, you Lava Burst the middle minion. It's going to hit the side minions. Um, if you buff minions, you know, you go with the Rock Biter weapon. You Rock Biter one, it's going to Rock Biter three. And if they all have Wind Fury, so you go Wind Fury, Rock Biter, and they all now have plus three and Wind Fury. So there's going to be some very cheesy plays with this guy. Um, because that ability is just super powerful. Granted, it's kind of like a win more sometimes because it only really works if, you, if you're planning to buff your own minions, you have to have those minions on the board to begin with. But the fact that you can use it on your opponent, you can use it for yourself, you can use it for buffs, you can use it for debuffs. He only costs three mana. His stats aren't great, but his ability makes up for it. So I think this is gonna be like one of those, like if there's control shaman that isn't Shuttercuck, this guy will definitely be a part of that because regardless of you using it on yourself or your opponent, you're getting value of this guy almost the second you play it. As long as they have more than one minion on the board. Granted, if they only have one minion, then it doesn't really do anything. But this card in my mind is a it's a pretty, pretty good <clears throat> Shaman Legendary uh, in comparison to some of the other ones we've seen in the past. The next one, we're going to High Priestess. Uh, it's a four mana, three, four taunt life steal. When you discard this, add two copies of it in your hand. Blizzard has been pushing discard warlock for like ever. I don't want to see the deck come to light because the cards that you discard are completely random. So sometimes you're going to discard the best cards to discard. Sometimes you're going to discard the worst cards to discard. There's no consistency in what you choose or not choose to discard. The only option you have is option you have is do you discard now or do you discard later? So um obviously this is a very very good discard card synergy because if you discard this you get two more you just and then you have a higher chance to discard one of those because you have two of them in your hand and if you discard both then you're gonna get four copies and then you can play like you know them all and they're three fours which are pretty decently statted for four mana not great but the ability makes up for it plus it has taunt and lifesteal and because you're playing discard warlock you're not doing a lot and you don't have a lot of cards in your hand so having a taunt and a lifesteal to save you from dying was one of the main issues that when we did play discard warlock i was coming to was by the time we got our portal off and we would draw back the cards that we would miss with life tap or other abilities 
we were just dead because our life total was gone. Even though we would have the board completely covered and our hand would be just the same as our opponents, our life total was what was missing. So taunt and lifesteal on this card, really good, plus the ability. So this is again just pushing discard warlock up the tier like whatever it is now like tier non-existent so blo <laughs> the deck loses to everything i was i played the deck so every expansion i played discard warlock and that deck sucks like sometimes you get like a lucky win here or there but like the deck is horrible so you know maybe this bumps it up a little bit we'll see uh there's some a couple other uh discard mechanics that we're gonna cover and they're pretty decent but not as good as this so is discard warlock gonna be a thing if it's just if it's just what they released so far probably not if they release more stuff maybe um but i don't think discard warlock guys will ever be like a con like a really competitive deck um just because of the randomness that already hearthstone has plus the randomness of the actual discard mechanic in itself but this card is very good um War master voon uh from my understanding they've actually already nerfed this guy i believe he was five mana um, when they first announced them, and they actually changed them to four mana already. I'm not sure if they were doing that so odd warriors wouldn't be able to play them or whatnot. But as soon as I saw them for five mana, I was like, oh, we can play our odd, our big odd dragon warrior, which you guys, we played in Legend. We had a blast with it actually pretty well. Had like a 60% win rate. Um, and then they changed them to four mana here. So now he can't be played in odd, my odd Baku big dragon warrior, which is probably what they saw. They, oh man, Warshak played that big dragon. Well, we can't, we can't, we, no, 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 no. We can't put this guy in that deck. Mm -mm -mm. So um, for four mana, four, three, battle cry, copy all dragons in your hand. I mean, obviously this is a huge value tool, right? You got like Alex Straza in your hand. You got like Ysera in your hand. I don't know why you'd have Malagos in a warrior deck, but you know, Malagos is in your hand. Um you know deathwing i don't know why you'd have two deathwings because one is just going to discard the other deathwing but there's other sizable decent dragons i think but those are the biggest ones i could possibly think of um i mean it's just huge value but is he going to see play i don't know i really don't know it's all going to depend on whether or not um we get warrior sees more dragons this expansion which i think it will if they're printing cards like this what are those dragons and um you know, is it going to be like a mid-range dragon warrior? Or is it going to be a control dragon warrior? If it's a control dragon warrior, then it has to compete with all the other control decks, which currently also have death knights and what's what we've seen. And warrior death knight sucks. Um, so we'll have to see. All right, so heading on over to the next one, the rogue legendary, we have Grawl the Shark. This one, I don't, I don't, it doesn't really look too much like a shark. It looks like some teleporting worm monster from like an interdimensional galaxy. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. We can call it a shark, okay? It's a 5 mana 2-2 two, two beast, so the stats absolutely suck. Battle cry, eat a minion in your deck and gain its stats. Death rattle, add it to your hand. I mean, it's really weak to silence. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. Why would you play this? <laughs> like, seriously. Why, why, why would you, like... What is the point of this card? I have no idea. I'm trying to think of like, what if you play this in like a Malagos deck and you eat Malagos because it's one of the only minions, right? That's best case. And then you can proc its death rattle and then you get Malagos immediately. Battle cry, gain its stats. So its stats normally mean it's attack and its defense. It, it, I don't think it's gonna gain its ability. If this were to gain its ability, then you could play this in a Malagos deck and you essentially have three Malagoses. You have this, you have the Malagos that comes out of this when it dies. Now, oh, never mind, you just have two Malagoses. But then it gets silenced, but then you'd proc the Death Rattle immediately. So if it's just the stats, this card is fucking horrible, which I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But you, if you also get the ability of this, then it's okay. But the ability of the card that you eat, but I'm pretty sure you don't get it. And I'm pretty sure there's no, I, 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 don't, I don't know, this card, ugh. Ooh, this card. I like this card a lot. It's pretty bad, but I liked it. <laughs> uh, this is the Soul Flare. This is a 10 mana. You're like, holy smokes, it's 10 mana. You better be the best ability I've ever seen ever. Uh, 9 mana, or 9 mana, 10 mana, 9 attack, 6 HP, Death Rattle, Shuffle, a Corrupted Blood into each player's deck. Uh, editing Rob, I didn't put it on my list here, but let's throw up Corrupted Blood sometime, like right there somewhere. And from what I understand, it says when you draw this card, deal three damage to yourself and put two more, I believe, in the deck is from what I remember. If I just said that completely wrong, just read the card and then I'm going off of that. But it's it's an interesting mechanic because, first of all, it's a death rattle, right? So not a battle cry. So it can be silenced and it costs 10 mana. So they have room to silence it the second it, come out, it comes out. But if they don't, 
like what happens because it gives it to both players right so this is an inevitable fatigue mechanic that will occur sometime and if one player happens to you know it goes into a deck and one player draws and immediately adds two the other guy draws immediately you know it draws two and all of a sudden they have got four or five of these it's just gonna spiral completely out of control because the first person to get it and get two i mean the whole deck is just gonna get filled with these things granted you're playing this on turn 10 which is probably going to be pretty late into the game and if both players do it you know what i'm saying it's hard to right now with the cards available picture some sort of win condition that runs this only because it does it for both players not just your opponent if it did it for just your opponent then we're, we're we would be cooking with something really spicy but Right now, we are also inhaling our own spices, which is killing us, which is what this guy would do. So currently, I'm interested in playing this card. I have to figure out somehow and way to put him in a deck where it makes sense. And I can trigger his death rattle somehow, somewhere. But until then, we're going to put this guy on hold. I don't want to call him atrocious. He looks atrocious, but I have faith. faith. Have faith in the light or have faith in the soul flyer. All right. Uh, the legendary mage card uh this is also a very interesting card and uh kind of a form we've seen before there's it's a little loa that goes with it spirit of the dragon hawk so for seven mana four four beast you're like you better have a pretty good ability uh, battle cry if your hero power has dealt eight damage this game summon ragnaros the fire lord ragnaros has returned to odd mage because he's seven mana but we probably won't even play this in odd mage because you can't play the spirit of the dragon hawk with it and i don't know why they would do this it, when i We'll cover the Spirit of the Dragon Hawk and what it does here, and then I'll explain like what I don't like. Um, the two mana, uh, three HP, spell for one turn. Your hero power also uh, targets adjacent minions. So if you watched the preview yesterday, and if you didn't, I'll tell you. Um, so if you hit a middle minion, it's going to hit the adjacent ones, just like that Shaman Legendary that we went over previously. But they also incorporated, incorporated. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Implemented imposed created developed any of these words would have been okay incorporated what the fuck am i saying um a uh, bunch of mage buff mechanics so there's a one mage card it's like two mana that says at you know your hero power does two more damage this turn so if you ping a minion for three that's in the middle it's going to do three to the uh sides of it similar to like how meteor does you know 15 to the middle one and three to the sides so this card right here can be used in conjunction with one of those guys and you can actually do a sizable amount of damage to three minions if your opponent's going wide i mean if you even look at odd paladin you know the amount of one ones they summon you know you ping one 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 it actually kills the two to the left and the right of that is pretty solid plus it counts as three damage which makes the eight damage on the dragon hawk go down to five and you really only need to use that you know two times or it's like half of the cost of eight damage already just by pinging one time with the spirit of the dragon hawk so the synergies are there it's really good um the requirement to play ragnaros is kind of eh, because by turn seven sometimes you'll have it sometimes you'll not most of the time you know by turn 10 and whatnot you probably have the eight damage accumulated but there is the requirement to this so you just have to keep in mind that every time you draw this card it's not like an instant play which we'll probably see a few highlights of that like people are like oh my god i got ragnaros for lethal and they play the card and then they don't actually have the eight damage by the hero power and they don't get the summon ragnaros so small requirements like this make the card a little less you know good but i don't think it's that impactful into it so when i was looking at this i saw this card first and i was like oh shit odd mage now has a reason to like you know exist because their hero power does two and you want to use it a lot and this complements you using that hero power a lot but the problem is in order to get to that eight damage quickly, you could also use the Spirit of the Dragon Hawk, which would actually do three. So maybe, uh, I guess four pings of the mage isn't that bad. So maybe odd mage, even without the spirit, isn't bad because, you know, it does two damage now that I think about it. But um, the guy's reasoning behind Spirit of the Dragon Hawk was, oh, we want people to play this not only an odd mage, we want to also have them play it an even mage so they could play Spirit of the Dragon Hawk and even mage. It's like, you fucking kidding me do you think they're gonna people are actually you're gonna play even mage you're gonna play spirit of the dragon hawk just to ping and it do one more damage to the minions beside it like no absolutely not why would you play even mage with and then include this garbage by itself without the the phoenix lady person hawk so it's just like oh you could have made this a one mana you could have made this a three mana and it would have been so sick and it and it's not like with the dragon hawk odd mage is actually going to be good it's still going to be a meme deck probably tier four tier three um but if you would have made odd mage and also included this card you know maybe it would have been a high tier three maybe low tier two who knows but like 
they they intentionally didn't make the deck as powerful as they could have um because of unknown because they even mage fuck even mage <laughs> who the shit plays even mage no one played even mage maybe people did and then they didn't because it sucks <laughs> Uh, another legendary coming in here, a giant, gi giant dinosaur. I think this card sucks, but that's just me. A nine mana seven seven rush overkill, summon a beast from your hand. So if it kills a minion, which it will because it has rush, it's a seven seven. You get to summon a beast from your hand. So people are thinking like charge devil sore. I don't know. Maybe you could play this in like big hunter or the death rattle hunter, and then it comes out at winter wisp, and then you attack, and then it pulls king crush from your hand. Like there's combos that enable this card to do good or do well. I don't know. Maybe it's not as bad as I don't think it's as bad as I'm making it sound because you play this and then you get to summon a seven a high made king caress grizzly man yeah this isn't bad in like a hunter deck but I don't really see how it fits in any other deck but hunter it actually fits so I'll take that back we'll have to see this card though the ironhide direhorn really good in arena I don't see this being played and constructed there were some people like oh my god infinite value holy shit the thing is guys it needs overkill which means it needs to trade into a minion first there used to be a card um that it was the when inspire was around which was a mechanic they long got they've 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 rotated out you could inspire and summon like a three five or something like that with one minion that costs like five or six um now like overkill you have to play this it has to live and then you have to trade into a minion it has to live and then only then would you summon a one five five so in arena value is everything this card is great and constructed this i don't think this will see any play whatsoever at all um it just takes way too long seven mana seven seven if we look at you know we want cards that when you play them they do things right away and this doesn't do anything right away and it requires your opponent to have a card and then you have to trade into it and how many times do you think you're going to be able to trade with this card to summon a five five iron hide run like i don't know it just seems like it, it's an annoying card if it play if it sticks you know like it's obviously good for your opponent but there's just too many really good constructed cards that this is not going to see play uh this next card is definitely a meme just a garabasi chicken it's just an angry crit chicken it says overkill again plus five attack so like best case scenario right they have like this that they got off like rexar and they were able to give it like three health or six health or whatever minion they combined it with right and then they like crackling razor mole and they give it poisonous or they were able to kill a one one and then every time it overkills it gets plus five attack and because it has wind fury or plus attack it, it just grows by five every turn if it kills a minion eventually it does like 20 damage to your opponent that's like best case scenario but obviously that's not going to occur very often and or at all immediately but probably so it will happen eventually you trust me there's hundreds of thousands of people playing hearthstone that this will eventually kill somebody but obviously it's not like a main deckable card uh, seven mana a new challenger epic uh discovery six cost minion summon it with taunt and divine shield when i'm thinking of six cost minions for aladdin sunkeeper tyreem is like literally the only thing that comes to mind <laughs> um but in general we have like the sunkeeper or some lady she's already a six drop she already has divine shield and she already has taunt so this does nothing for her there's a couple other six drops i don't really see as this being that great to be honest because why wouldn't you just play a seven mana card in your deck that doesn't summon random things why wouldn't you just play a seven mana you know taunt divine shield card and then you don't have to worry about discovering a random one and it can be seven mana not six mana <laughs> so you're playing a seven mana card to get a six mana card poggers boys that's the mindset we need mm -hmm. why pay why 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 pay six when you can pay seven and get six yeah but you didn't think of that uh water boy uh, a lot of people were freaking out about this guy like oh my god new combos unleashed it's not this this activates zero new combos chat and by chat i mean youtube guys by youtube guys i mean you um it's a two mana two one battle cry your next hero power this turn costs zero you're paying two to play this guy which is your hero power so you're getting a two one and you get to hero power that is it it's this turn not next time you use your hero power if it said next time you use your hero power then maybe more combos like some combos can be active but like like you're already paying two which is the price of your hero power so hopefully you guys understand that some people in chat did not seem to understand that this does not open up new things because you're it, it, it's the same you're just getting a two one out of the deal exactly the same i don't know why this was confusing for some 
But some people were really freaking out about that card. And I was like, no, 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 guys, think, think, think about it. Uh, Daring Fire Eater. This is one of the cards I mentioned earlier. It's a one mana, one, one battle cry. Your next hero power this turn deals two more damage. So, in, you know what I'm saying? So you play this guy, you have the spirit lower down, you hit a minion, it does three damage. And then because it has the adjacent minion buff thing, you know, it does three damage to each minion adjacent to it. That card we just went over with the Dragon Hawk, the, the buffs, the damage, and the adjacent. Yes. Um, this card's actually pretty good. Uh, so, one mana basically do two damage. If you can also hear a power which costs two mana so on turn three you can play a one one and deal two damage or three damage that's i think this card is pretty good it doesn't have to go into like you know a buff mage deck this in my opinion can be in burn mage um it can be in mid-range mage or any sort of elemental mage um it works well with jaina you know you can play um this and then ping it with jaina um in the late stages of the game if you have to so it at least turns into a water elemental if you don't want to push two more damage so it's not a bad card at all this is probably one of the better commons that we've seen so far uh here's defiles replacement shriek <laughs> uh one mana uh warlock spell discard your lowest costing card deal two damage to all minions so as we know uh warlock uh will lose defile <laughs> uh eventually and by eventually the next expansion to release not this one but the following one i believe once that happens they have just hellfire again which apparently isn't enough so they have to have shriek and this whole goes with the whole discard thing again discard your lowest costing card which is normally the weakest card in your hand so if you have another shriek in your hand you're actually going to discard the other shriek but mm. i mean it's a good card don't get me wrong this is a really good card It will definitely see play. I think this will actually see play even if it um, isn't in discard Warlock. Just as good removal. Like, dealing two damage to everything for one mana. Like, granted, you discard a card, but Warlock doesn't care. Warlock just draws more cards. And it's the lowest cost in your hand. So you're not even worried about, like, discarding Gul'dan or, like, anything like that. Like, it's going to discard... I don't... I mean, I don't... I'm off the top of my head. Low Warlock spells are... Uh, wow, I was about to say Dispel. Um... Uh, defile i mean and then besides that i'm thinking like hellfire spell stones and things of that nature uh shadow bolts so reckless dire troll again just more discard <laughs> three mana two six taunt battle cry discard your lowest card this is just an overly statted small minion um they're just making it so they're just printing cards like they already have like fellhound which is like a four mana three eight and you discard two cards. This you discard one card. It costs one mana less. It has one less attack and two less SP. Or S, or S, why am I saying SP? Like what is wrong? HP. <laughs> what is wrong with me today, guys? Holy crap. My mind is just spaghetti code like Hearthstone. Um, I mean, it. it's good. Like it, it's a really solid taunt. I don't really see a downside. Like in Arena, it's amazing. In Arena, it's really good. In constructed, we'll have to see because if discard warlock isn't a thing, obviously this card won't see that much play. But if discard warlock is a thing; it'll probably see this guy in there. He's just a really good. He's not even a demon though, so he doesn't get summoned back with Gul'dan. And having a two six taunt with Gul'dan isn't always bad, but I guess you just want your void daddies. So, uh, some more warlock synergy. Uh, Soul Warden, a six mana six six battle cry. Three random cards you discarded this game to your hand, so you could pick up any of the cards that obviously you discarded. Which are cards that either discard more cards or they got returned to your hand because you discard them like the uh, legendary warlock card we went over just a little bit ago. Um, you know, adding more of those cards to your hand. They have taunt, they have lifesteal. You discard those, they start making more of themselves. So, I mean, discard warlock, this card brings a lot of value to the table because, as you know, uh, um, one of the best ways for a discard warlock to work properly is the cataclysm that just kills all the minions on the board and all the cards in the hand. And then from there, they rebuild through tapping in, you know, the portal that they throw down to summon imps. So, this card will actually be able to put it's a one for three which is huge like the value that this card generates is huge granted the cards that you resurrected back uh or that you discarded were good enough that would you'd want them to resurrect back but i mean this is just a huge huge value tool for discard warlock it's giant this card i really like a lot uh the smolder smolder thorn lancer three mana three two battle cry if you're holding a dragon destroy dam damage enemy minion so it's an execute inside of a minion and execute as we know is worth two mana um so we're basically getting a one mana three two that 
has execute built into it and it's an odd card so it can fit into odd warrior which is weird because they put the the legendary new warrior card is an even card now instead of an odd card so they made the card that duplicates the dragons not synergize with odd warrior which i'm getting <laughs> why why would they take the card that makes more dragons in your hand and fits in a dragon deck and put that in an even deck or a non-odd deck and then the card that fits in an odd deck not like oh. regardless this is a really good card this will be played in if not every control based warrior deck that's out there as long as it's like has a couple dragons in it primordial drake ysera maybe even deathwing now i'm not sure and i'm sure they're gonna print sleepy dragon and i'm pretty sure they're gonna print other dragon peoples i, I guarantee you there's gonna be at least one decent warrior dragon in this expansion hopefully um because if not, that'd be quite disappointing. They're pushing all these dragons and then they don't print any dragons. I'd <laughs> be like, what the hell? Uh, rating party, uh, three mana, draw two pirates from your deck combo and a weapon. That's pretty good. Draw three for three. That's, I mean, for drawing purposes, that's absolutely amazing. In some sort of aggressive pirate deck, aggress aggressive rogue pirate deck, this gives Sprint a run for its money. It costs one less and you can draw three if you combo with it. And most of the time you'll be able to combo with it because you're running pirates and pirates are cheap anyway. So uh, this is actually not a bad card in my opinion at all. I'm not sure what weapon you'd want to pull from your deck to be honest, but I bet there's going to be some weapon that synergizes with pirates. It would just make sense because these pirates are holding weapons. <laughs> so I would assume they're going to make some sort of weapon that at least, you know, fits into the deck. Untamed Beast Master. Uh, three mana, three, four. Whenever you draw a beast, give it plus two, plus two. So um, obviously a hunter deck is where this, you know, where, where, where you think this belongs. It does make sense. Two plus two is a huge buff. May not seem like a lot chat, but that's two princes. Whenever you like, you know, play the old tempo rogue and they go prince, shadow step, prince. Yeah, this this, this is what that does. Um, and as we know, mid range hunter runs a shit ton of beasts. So even if they draw like a dire mole, like the lowest card in their deck, one mana, one three, it turns into a th one mana, three, five. That's pretty good. <laughs> so uh, and this guy is statted pretty nicely. But as we know, Hunter has no draw. So it's not like they can go like Untamed Beastmaster and then like Sprint, right? Because obviously Sprint's a rogue card, but Hunter has nothing even close to what Sprint does. Um, so when I'm thinking of this card, you know, you look at like cards that the only rendition of Hunter that has draw and that's the quest hunter and it has queen or queen, you know, Carnat Carnassa in it, Carnassus, and she actually puts one mana three two beasts in your deck that when you play them, you draw a card. So theoretically, if you have this guy on the board and you best case again, best case scenario, you can have a bunch of five fours like he has to live for multiple turns. You have to draw beasts. He has to not die. Like, there's a lot of requirements to him. But if he sticks around, you can win the game. Like, if he stays on the board for, like, three, four turns and you actually drew, like, two or three beasts, like, you probably win. But anyway, if you if you let a card sit on the Hunter's board for more than one or two turns anyway, even three turns and they're hitting you in the face for three, that's ten damage over the course of three turns, you know, you're probably not going to win that game anyway because Hunter does a lot of damage. Spirit of the Tiger. Ooh, this guy's... This was uh, one of the interesting cards I saw. Spirit uh, obviously has stealth for the one turn, but it says after you cast a spell, summon a tiger with stats equal to its cost. So you could play in my... in my When my first look is 10 mana, you play Spirit of the Tiger, and then you go Spike Rich Steed. You summon a 6-6 six, six tiger, right? And then you've given this 9 health with 2 attack, and it's pretty beefy, and it still has uh, silence... Or it still has um, stealth. And then you can go ahead and play like Dino Size on something, like Hero Power Dino Size, and then you make an 8 8 Tiger. So, granted, the Tigers don't have any special abilities, but you know, when you play a spell, you're getting the spell's use, use plus an additional minion to it. I mean, that's just a very powerful combination. And it also synergizes, of course, with the Loa that we first covered, um, with the whole, you know, when you play a spell, it reduces the cost of the minion. Um, so, obviously, this is going to be. It's going to have dino sizes or spike rich steeds or blessings of kings and stuff like that in the deck so um obviously if you're playing the loa you'll probably play spirit of the tiger they just kind of go hand in hand they made a point to do that uh templar this guy's pretty pretty beefy if he gets off uh gets off it's very similar to like the warlock card um the four man it's a four mana four four right and it says battle cry if you restore 10 health this game and gain at four plus four and taunt so very very similar to the warlock um Fell Reaver, I believe his name is, not Fell Reaver. I'm pulling him up on the screen if I say his name wrong. 
I'll know. Well, you'll know, and I'll know later when I pull them off. It'd be like, damn. <laughs> um, really powerful if you've healed for 10, but right now, Paladin, when you think about how they heal, they have True Silver Champion, right? The weapon that heals them for two. And then they have the new uh, Legendary card that doubles their healing. And then they have like Zill, right? But I guess the new Tiger as well, because you attack with the Tiger, it has, I think, seven attacks. So that's like more than half. So four mana, eight, eight. If there's any sort of control Paladin, this will see play. If control Paladin comes back, this will see play. Plus the Paladin Death Knight, you know, that heals. The weapon has life steal on that too. So healing, I guess, and they have lay on hands. So it's just most of their healing is, it takes, you know, it, you're not, they're not going to be playing this card on four is what, it, what I'm saying. For them to heal the 10, or at least have healed for 10 health, it's going to be probably turn eight or later in the particular match, at least. Um, so this is definitely like a late game card, not, I mean, you could play it on four just to have like a four mana four, four, right? But to get its effect, it's happening later. Very similar to the warlock one, which you're not normally playing that card. You're not playing a four mana seven, seven in even lock. You're playing it much later and your health is low. And that's like the downside of playing it. Uh, the last card we're going to cover is going to be the fire tree witch doctor and it says battle cry if you're holding a dragon discover a spell so this can work in any deck that's going to be playing dragons uh you know we think in the past of dragon decks we think of priest so i'm thinking like spiteful priest they run quite a few dragons um dragon warrior runs quite a few obviously will probably run quite a few dragons and generating you know a spell in a warrior deck you know getting maybe an extra reckless fury brawl execute shield slam i mean those are pretty powerful spells warrior also has a lot of shitty spells um but it's a two mana two two generate one so any in my opinion any deck that runs dragons will play this card it's just one of those things that it, it it's like the um nether spite historian if anybody remembers he was a two mana one three if you're holding a dragon discover a dragon and um this is discover a spell and you get to pick of three probably most of the time we'll get at least one decent one right if not you know that sucks but most of the time it's going to get some pretty good value and this card is just good this card is i i think this might be a pretty underrated card um people might look over it but i think this card's gonna be really really good. like guys good card good card here um like a literally a staple in any sort of dragon deck all right so with that that covers all the cards that we're going to cover sorry if this was a bit lengthy i know i know but there was a lot of cards to cover they threw them all on me at one time and um i'll try to again 10 max 15 cards max per time not not this 20 plus so with that thanks for watching love to hear what you have to say about any of the cards or anything you'd like to add on and i'll see you in the next video of course i'm robert warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is